Hello, I'm Tom Lowers, and this is the first of a set of tutorials where we explore using Hummingbird with some cool third-party products. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to use the Hummingbird with squishy circuits, which are circuits that can be built with homemade Play-Doh. The idea of mixing Play-Doh and electronics and the recipes for the dough come from the Thomas Lab at the University of St. Thomas. You'll need several things for this tutorial. First, you'll need to make some Play-Doh. Here we've made a couple of batches of conductive dough and insulating dough. Second, you'll need the Squishy Circuits kit, which contains 25 LEDs, a buzzer, and a motor. The kit is sold for a very reasonable $25. Third, you'll need a pair of wire strippers and some 24-26 gauge stranded wire. It's just at least two colors, so you have at least one that's ground. Fourth, if you'd like to use the dough as a sensor, you'll need a 470 ohm or 1 kilo ohm resistor. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to hook up the LEDs, buzzer, and motor in the Squishy Circuits kit to the Hummingbird with Play-Doh. So let's start with my personal favorite, LEDs. Uh, right here, we've made a squishy circuit sandwich. So we have three colors of Play-Doh. The red and the blue are both conductive dough. The white dough in the middle is insulating. So that means that electricity cannot pass from the red dough through to the blue dough. That's necessary in order for us to make a complete circuit with some circuit elements. So we will strip some wire and hook up this sandwich to one of LED port 1 on the Hummingbird. So I'm going to cut off the length of wire. I'm going to strip a small um, amount of wire, uh, amount of the insulation off on this wire, and then on the side which I'll insert into the Play-Doh, I'll strip about an inch and a half off. So, sort of, since this is stranded wire, I'm sort of braiding it together. And then I will stick it in. And this side I will put into the positive terminal of LED port 1. I'm going to take my black wire, which um, sort of by standard is usually, usually refers to the ground. Uh, I have the Hummingbird hooked up to Snap, and I have this LED port set to maxim the maximum value. So now I'm taking a red LED. Now the LED has two legs, and one is longer than the other, and that's important. The long leg has to go to the positive side of the circuit, and the short leg has to go to ground, to the negative side. So we'll hook it up, sort of spread the legs a little. One side in here, and the other in here. And ta-da! Glowy LED. So, let's use all the colors in the kit. There are five. Uh, and I actually have this hooked up to a, a knob. So the knob sensor is hooked up to port 1, and as I turn the knob, I can make them brighter or dim them. So I've turned this knob into a dimmer switch. Alright, so let's set that aside. There's a number of tutorials on the Squishy Circuits website, and one of them refers to an RGB LED controller. Um, and that's actually what, what I'll show you next. We're going to hook up a red, green, and blue LED with conductive Play-Doh to the uh, Hummingbird's 
uh, RGB port and we'll control it with this knob. I actually have a regular tricolor LED already hooked up so I can show you the program and as I turn the knob it changes from red to green to blue. So let's do that. So I'm going to use for maximum clarity, I'm going to use all of the colors of conductive Play-Doh that we have. So we have a blue, a little patch of blue, a little patch of green, and a little patch of red. Now I will use the yellow as, which is also conductive, as the ground terminal. And I'm not using any insulating dough, I'm just keeping things apart with air, which is a perfectly good insulator. So now I'll take a red LED. green LED, and blue LED, and then I'll take some wire that I've stripped already for this. I've got my black wire, which I'll hook up to the uh, minus terminal on the Hummingbird's uh, tricolor LED port 2. And I'll stick that in here in the yellow play -Doh. Now I will take a red wire, stick it into the B terminal, and that'll go into here. That's for the blue LED, obviously. Um, G wire. So this wire is going into G, so it'll go into the green. And then finally, the wire for red. Now, as you can see, it's set to blue right now. As I turn the knob, this LED is also blue. The blue starts to fade and the green gets stronger, brighter. And the red starts to get brighter and the green starts to dim. And if you put this through a sufficiently um, yeah, if you put this through um, a nice translucent material, it would uh, mix the colors very nicely. So that's how you hook up LEDs to the Hummingbird with conductive Play-Doh. You can just use the regular LED ports on the Hummingbird. Alright, so next up we're going to make some very loud noises using the piezoelectric buzzer. And what we found works best in terms of hooking up the buzzer to the Hummingbird is to use the vibration motor ports. They provide just enough power to power the buzzer. So again, we're going to take out some conductive Play-Doh. In this case, I'm going to use red. Notice that the buzzer has a red and a black wire, so I'm going to hook up the red to the red Play-Doh and use my yellow Play-Doh Play again as electrical ground. Got the black right here. Squish that in. And then I'll use some nice wire made here. And I'll put that in uh, the positive terminal, the plus terminal of vibration motor port 1. And I'll stick that in here. 
and then hook this up to the negative terminal, minus on vibration port 1, put that in there. You can hear it's already going, so now it's quite loud. So I've set it up so that the knob is controlling the power going to the buzzer. As you can tell, it's, it can be a very loud noise, so it's nice to have a volume knob. <laughs> so that's how you hook up the uh, piezoelectric buzzer. All right, so lastly, we're going to show you how to hook up the motor from the kit to the motor port on the Hummingbird. So I'm going to put the motor in this conveniently shaped spool of wire, just so that it has a nice little stand. And I'm going to stick the motor in some Play-Doh, or the motor terminals. Use red for one end and blue for the other end. And I will take two red wires and I'll hook up the um, red to the positive terminal of motor port one on the Hummingbird. So we make a loop of wire and stick that in the Play-Doh. And take the opposite for this side. So negative terminal. And I'm using two red wires here because unlike LEDs, motors aren't exactly, don't need to go in the port in one specific direction. It's just that it affects uh, whether they spin clockwise or counterclockwise, uh, how the uh, voltage is on the uh, motor terminals. So I'll stick that in. And let's see if we get some movement. All right. So now, once again, I'm controlling the motor with the knob. And I can get the motor to slow down and stop, and then start going in the other direction. And I've hooked up a little piece of tape to it so you can see that. So one direction and the other direction. Now you may notice that the motor terminals um, have these uh, long pieces of metal attached to them. That's because uh, the conductive Play-Doh is not a perfect conductor the way a wire is, and so the more surface area is in contact with the Play-Doh, the better the um, current flows to the motor. And so, while I don't have these nice long pieces of metal um, on my wires, I did strip my wires extra long to try to put as much uh, of the wire in contact with the Play-Doh as possible to run the motor. Alright, so I have one last trick to share with you about conductive dough, and that is that you can actually use conductive dough as a sensor. So as I mentioned earlier with the motor tutorial, the conductive dough is not perfectly conductive like a wire. It has a certain amount of resistance, much more than a regular wire. And so this allows, you, and the resistance changes based on how you stretch it and deform it. So you can actually use this as a sensor. And the way you do that is to take one wire and hook it up to the S terminal of one of your sensor ports and stick it into a ball of dough. Take another wire, hook that up to the minus terminal on your sensor port. Stick it into the same ball of dough. 
and then take a resistor. In this case, I'm using a 470 ohm resistor, which I found to have sort of the best overall sensor response. And I'm going to stick one leg into the plus terminal, and that's pretty easy. And the other leg I'm going to stick with the red wire into the S terminal. And now what we've created is a voltage divider with a known resistance and a resistance that changes, which is the Play-Doh. And so we're capturing that change in resistance. Um, and we're going to use it to control all of the things we've hooked up, except the buzzer because it's just too loud. Alright, so now I have my conductive Play-Doh sensor hooked up, and as I stretch it, hopefully LEDs will change, the motors will turn on, and as I break it apart, it goes into another state. So that's how you turn Play-Doh into a sensor. So that concludes our tutorial on building squishy circuits with Hummingbird. Uh, we hope you enjoyed building them as much as we did.